Nothing in my life changed until I came to believe that I was truly loved by God. Sometimes in our lives, we don't come to understand this love until we have run out of every other option. Like the people who uh, were in Bethlehem when Joseph and Mary first arrived. There was no room for them in the inn because the people were completely wrapped up in their everyday life. They didn't understand that the one who was the greatest, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, was coming to be born into their lives. And so like us, we can be so occupied in our lives that in our own self-sufficiencies that we do not make room for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that's exactly what happened to me. I began to run around and just occupy myself with everything I could do to become self-sufficient until every single door that I ran to was completely, completely empty and useless. If I put myself out there, was, was I going to fall into condemnation? So I had to learn scriptures like Romans 8.1 that says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I had to really let myself believe words like that. And he, he loves us with absolutely no strings attached. That means that even when I fall down, even when I may treat other people as they don't deserve to be treated, even when I have unforgiveness in my heart, that He still loves me. He's still going to take me back. He's still going to pick me back up and brush me off. And that's something that we're going to grow and discover as we experience the love of the shepherd together. I thought about what in the world it means to really follow Jesus. And what does it mean to to walk with Him and to be His? And there were so many misunderstandings and so many misperceptions I had about what it looked like to be a Christian woman. And I was just really crying out to the Lord and I just almost wanted to throw in the towel and give up. I was praying about it and I felt these the words of Psalm 23 come and pop into my head and I felt like He put an if in front of them. If I am your shepherd, you shall not want. All I have to do is follow him. And that really, really challenged my faith. And I began to look at things in a different way. And I mean, I began to really intensely look at Psalm 23, which I consider the funeral psalm because, let's face it, how many of us have heard this psalm read at a funeral? So I began to look at it as a learning to follow Jesus psalm. And that's actually where this Bible study came from. What I understood is I studied not only Psalm 23, but also I studied sheep. And I learned so many, so many things about sheep, which gave me such a blessed assurance about who I am. And that God does not expect me to be perfect. And He does not expect me to be the Proverbs, you know, 31 woman all the time. He expects me to be the perfect Rhonda. There, this word becoming is so much a part of that because we are never going to arrive until we get to heaven. And if you know anything about sheep, and especially about sheep in ancient of days when, when this psalm was written, they never had a home their whole lives. They, they spent come, going up and down a mountain. And so in essence, their home was their shepherd. And so it makes sense for Jesus to say, I am your way, I am your truth, I am your life, because He is the shepherd, He is the way, He is the truth, He is the life. We will believe the lies of the enemy of our souls more than we will believe the love of the Father. I have done this so many times in my own life and we're so quick to believe our fear over our Father. We also will stay in the darkness we hear about in the book of John. People love darkness rather than they love light. He stands there waiting, ready to shepherd us to the next chapter in our life, but we're just not ready yet. And so these are, these are ways that we're very sheep-like. And so ultimately what keeps us from moving forward in our journey with God and with our shepherd is us. The word for love in Greek is agapio. The definition of that is God's love for us. It finds its ultimate expression in Jesus Christ. And when we have self-will, it is the total negation of love. 
I believe it was Adrian Rogers who first said this and it's always stuck with me. When we are on the throne, Christ is on the cross, but when Christ is on the throne, we are on the cross. And it's up to us to decide which one. There was a time in my life where I was asking Jesus to give me a parallel to really, really understand what it looked like to be sheared and shorn from this world. What I came to know is the more and more I walked with the Lord and I learned to be shepherded by Him, it's about a letting go of self. He gave me the perfect example of this as I looked back over the time when my daughter Hope was born. My daughter Hope was born premature, so she was in the NICU for a while, and she came during an emergency C-section. She was in distress, and they had placed some type of a heart monitor on her, and I remember hearing her heart beat erratically, and then I remember hearing her heart stop. The next thing I knew, I, I woke up in the ER, and she had been delivered and I was terrified to open my eyes because I did not know what had happened to her. And that was terrifying to me. And the sweetest words I heard were those of a nurse leaning over saying, you have a beautiful daughter. I'll never forget those words as long as I live. It was two days before I got to see her. I was so anxious to get my hands on her and I, could, I was just crying at the thought of her being hurt. And those were my first moments. When I finally got to see her, I was instructed that I could not hold her, that I could just touch her for a few moments. And so I, I would put my hand over her head like this, and I could put my other hand over her bottom like this. And she was teeny tiny, she was about this big. And she had tubes all around her and she was an isolate. It took all of her energy just to keep her body temperature. So I could only do this for a very short time. And I would lean over her and I would say, Hope, this is your mom and your dad. This isn't your home. We need you to grow and we need you to get strong so you could come home. This place is not your home. And before too long, they would let me hold her for a little bit and try to feed her, just for a tiny bit of time because she still had to keep her body temperature. But there was one thing she wanted to do. She wanted to sleep more than she wanted to eat. And I would do every trick in the book, trying to twist the milk, trying to twist the bottle, everything, just to get her to eat. And I would say, eat hope, eat hope so you can come home because this place is not your home. You have to eat, you have to get stronger, you have to get these tubes off of you so you can come home, sweetie, because we want you home with us. And I would get so frustrated and I would cry and cry because she had no idea that there was anything bigger than this little isolate, that there was anything more than what she was experiencing right now. All she could think about was she wanted to be warm and she wanted to get back right into where she was comfortable. But I wanted her home with me. And all she wanted to do was sleep. <laughs> and so, soon enough, more tubes and more tubes would come off. And I'll never forget the day when I got the phone call that they said, come and get your daughter. She's ready to come home. And my husband and I both burst into tears and we could not wait to go get our daughter. And as I think about that now, I can just picture our Father and our Shepherd in Heaven just seeing us all hooked up to the world and just saying, you are not of this world. Eat, grow, because I want you home with me. And, and so He tries to feed us and we want to just sleep and stay in our warm places. We want to go where it's comfortable and where we feel safe but yet He wants us to grow strong and to become more and more His. And as we do, we become more and more and more unhooked from this world. And so, beloved, I leave you with this. For God so loved the world that He came, that He gave us His only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes in Him 
shall not perish but have everlasting life. Let him give you that everlasting life for you are his.